Hi everyone, my name is Connor Edwards. And I'm Peter Lane. We are both teaching at Sojo University. Uh, thank you for coming to our workshop. Today we will be talking about scaffolded Flipgrid videos and how you can build student voice and interaction in your classrooms. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. In this workshop, we are going to give a brief introduction to Flipgrid, tell you why we chose this application for our classes, show you how to set up a basic class, and then tell you about our scaffolded supports and how you can use them with your students. Finally, we'll share our closing thoughts and links to our materials and resources. So what is Flipgrid? It's a free video creation tool for students to have discussion and conversation with classmates online. And it's a great tool for students to share ideas and stories and opinions with their classmates. And why did we choose Flipgrid in our classes? Well, it's a great tool that can be used in both online and live classes. And due to COVID-19 restrictions, our students were not able to speak with each other in classes. They were wearing masks and they had no opportunity to communicate with their peers. Because of this, we felt that Flipgrid gave students an opportunity to share their voice and interact with their classmates. So next I will show you how to set up a basic class. I'll show you how to add users and share some important settings to keep in mind. After that, Peter will show you how to use our scaffolded supports with your students. All right, so now we are on the Flipgrid website. And although there is a smartphone application, we do recommend that teachers use the browser version for setting up their classes. So you can choose to sign up here, or in our case, we'll log in to our account. Next, we want to create a class. So we'll click create a group. And group name is our class name. So English communication one for our art and design students. Next, you have the option to change the URL code. And two options here for adding students. Students can join using their email accounts or by a username that you assign to them. If students use their email, it is a bit difficult to sign in. However, it's very easy for teachers to send feedback to their students, and students are also able to delete their own videos within the class. However, we found that setting up a class list uh, through CSV files was very handy for us. Um, and it's very easy for students to log in to their accounts. So here you can choose to upload a CSV file or you can add students manually. So for a username, students would simply use their student number to log in to their account. We'll hit next and you'll see a few options here to share a class, you can copy the URL, you can use a QR code, you can embed the course within Moodle, or you can even use Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams. So next, let's take a look at what a class would look like. So as you'll see, it's very empty right now, so let's add a few topics. Click add a topic and get started. So in our case, we'll do self introductions for our first topic. Next, you can add some prompts if you'd like. You can change the recording time, the time limit here, and you can also choose to moderate the videos before they're officially published to the class. After that, Feel free to add some media. You can use a video prompt here. You can add uh, a photo. So let's 
take a search here for hello and that will be the image for our topic. Next, we do recommend uh, going into the options and taking a look at some of the features here. So we wanted our students to reply to others. So there are a few options for that. You can remove comments altogether. You can do text comments, or in our case, we wanted text, uh, we wanted video comments only. After that, we decided to remove the view count and likes functions as uh, we thought our students were uncomfortable at seeing how many views they received and also um, the likes are a bit unnecessary, we felt. So we do recommend removing those. After that, for feedback, there are two options. You can use custom feedback where you'll define the rubric yourself or you can use Flipgrid's basic feedback, um, which you can give a score for ideas, performance, and you can also submit a text or video feedback uh, for your students to watch. And we'll hit create topic. So I am now logged into my personal Flipgrid account just to show you an idea of what fully set up Flipgrid classes might look like. So here you'll see a list of my classes. And in our class, we chose six topics for our students to make videos for. Uh, for example, self-introduction, school live, friends. And we designed and used scaffolded supports uh, to better prepare our students to make their videos for these topics. And at the end of the workshop, we will share a link um, to the resources for you to use as well. So just to give you an idea, uh, you have the option here to hide or make the topics active um, as you go throughout the class. And from a teacher's perspective, um, a student response video would look like this. You can see if the student has received any comments from classmates, and here you will see a few options. As a teacher, you can leave a public comment like students. And you can also give some private feedback to your students. So you can record your feedback. Uh, you can grade based on a rubric. And you can also add some comments to send to your students. For this workshop, we decided not to go into great detail on all of the possible settings and functions of Flipgrid. But we do recommend um, searching on, on YouTube. There are a lot of great resources out there that we found helpful when setting up Flipgrid for our classes. Instead, we'd like to turn our attention to the scaffolded support sheets that we feel can help your students um, feel more comfortable and better prepared to communicate with their peers uh, using Flipgrid as a tool. So now I'm going to talk about the scaffolded supports. Uh, we wanted to find a way to help our students. We designed the supports to act as a bridge between the technology and the learning. We were also a little worried um, our students might be reluctant to record themselves online. So we wanted to give them a little bit more help. The supports uh, give students the support and practice that they need, and it also helps students to build their confidence. It, when students study online, uh, things can be a little bit more confusing than in a normal classroom. So we also felt our students may need some extra support and direction. One of the best things about a scaffold is that it can be removed. So as students develop their skills, you can remove the scaffold and they can do things by themselves. Uh, next, I'm going to show you what is a scaffolded support and then I'm going to explain how you can use them in your classrooms. Uh, very simply, a scaffolded support uh, helps students to complete the task. It gives the student the support he or she needs to complete the task successfully. On our course, we based our supports on the topics we were doing 
during the semester. So we created uh, support about summer holidays. We did one about relationships, about hometowns. In this example, we have created a support about traveling. You can create these kind of supports about any topic that you are doing on your course. They're very easy to make. So how do students complete the activity? Uh, very simply, all they have to do is answer the questions and then they have to give a plus one. Uh, a plus one is an answer to a question. We ask our students to use five WH questions. As you know, five WH questions are who, what, where, when, why, how, etc. The five WH questions help students to explain their ideas, um, to give more information, and to provide examples. So if I was a student, I would answer the first question, where have you traveled? And I'm going to say, I have traveled to Sapporo. And now I have to give a plus one. So I have to explain this idea. I have to give more information. Why did I go to Sapporo? In my example, I'm going to say, I went to Sapporo to see the snow festival. Um, we always ask students to write full sentences. Um, this gives students uh, extra writing practice. The next question, where is your favorite place that you've traveled? My favorite place that I have traveled is, it's a difficult question, but I'm going to say Spain. And now I have to explain this um, with a 5WH. Where did you go? Mm, I visited Zaragoza and Madrid. So the student will continue. Um, for this activity, they would work by themselves and they would write the answers in the boxes. However, uh, you could use Teams, Microsoft Teams, for example, and you could have students to interview each other and their partner could write their answers in the boxes. It would be your decision. Uh, once students have finished their answers, they move to the next part of the activity. So this support is divided into two parts. You've got the main questions and answers in part number one, and now you come to the support. Uh, we feel that this is the key part of the activity. This is the part where we help students to develop their speaking skills and develop their communication skills. And this is the bridge between the technology and the learning, this section of the support. So the support helps students to explain their ideas and communicate with others. Very simply, it, it's a grid, and inside the grid, students will write their main ideas. So the students look at their sentences from the previous activity and they circle the key words from their sentences. Usually each sentence will have at least one key word and sometimes they might have more than one. But usually one sentence is one key word. In the example here, I have traveled to many places, I'm sorry, many prefectures, the student would circle prefectures. In the next sentence, for example, I have traveled to Okinawa, Tokyo and Hokkaido. The student needs to circle those three places, Okinawa, Tokyo and Hokkaido. In my example, I have traveled to Sapporo. So now I'm going to write Sapporo here into the grid. And this key word will remind me to talk about Sapporo. I went to Sapporo to see the snow festival. So now I'm going to write snow festival. In the next sentence, I have Spain. 
I'm going to say favorite. I'm going to put two keywords favorite Spain. And now in this box, there's actually another two keywords Zaragoza and Madrid. So if I were a student and I was using this grid, these keywords would help me to remember what I'm going to say and it would give me the support I need to create my sentences while I'm making my Flipgrid video. For example, Hi, I'm going to talk about places I have been. Uh, I have been to Sapporo. I went there to see the snow festival. One of my favorite places is Spain. Uh, I went to Zaragoza and Madrid. So the key words help students to create their sentences. They help the students to communicate their ideas. They help the students to, to interact with each other. We required our students to choose four of their answers. If they chose all of their answers, the videos would be too long. We wanted to, our students to keep their videos short. So students will choose four of their main ideas or answers, and then they write the keywords here into the grid. And the grid then acts as the support that the students need. This prevents students from just reading out their sentences. It prevents students from memorizing their answers. The grid encourages students to speak in a more natural way, to speak in a more authentic way. It feels more like real communication and it doesn't feel like the students are just reading out their sentences or memorizing their answers. So the grid is a great way for students to communicate in more natural and authentic ways. Uh, once they've created their support grid, they then use this to create their video. Again, recording a video on Flipgrid can be a bit intimidating. It, it can be a bit difficult for students. So they need something to help them to, to do the task successfully. They need something to help them to remember what they're going to talk about without memorizing and without reading their ideas. And this is why the grid is so important. Um, Connor and I also wanted our students to interact after posting their Flipgrid videos. Creating the Flipgrid video is just one part of the conversation or interaction. So we asked our students to ask five WH questions to each other. So in the final step, students will ask one five WH question to three different students. And they also have to then answer any questions that they're asked. So in the first activity, when they're thinking of five WH questions and writing their answers in the boxes, this is giving the students practice for later in the final step when they will be asking their classmates five WH questions too. So that's what uh, the scaffolded worksheets are. Uh, it's a very simple way for to support students learning to help them to communicate in more natural ways, to build their confidence. The, the grid gives them a little bit of help and confidence they need to communicate and to develop their language skills. The grid and the sheets are really adaptable. You can change them for any topic. You can make them more easy. You can make them more difficult. It's up to you. Uh, we really hope that you use our scaffolded supports in your class. Uh, we hope your students have a lot of fun using them and interacting together and we would love to see what you do in your class in the future. So before we wrap things up, we'd like to share a few things for you to look out for when using Flipgrid in your classrooms. So first, we found that the interface is sometimes confusing to students especially because there is no Japanese option. And the reply function is not always obvious or intuitive for students. In addition, we felt that it was difficult and challenging for our students to maintain a sense of live conversation with classmates. And there are no reply notifications, so students do need to manually check 
the application um, to see if any students have responded to their videos. Uh, here are some of our final thoughts. Uh, we feel that Flipgrid is a really helpful tool. Um, it builds student interaction and a sense of community, and it promotes student voice. However, no application is perfect. So we feel our scaffolded support sheets are a great way to help students, uh, to give them that extra bit of support that they need, uh, to encourage them to participate and to develop their language skills. So we really hope that you used our scaffolded support sheets in your classroom. And if you'd like to use our scaffolded supports, uh, please feel free to follow the link or scan the QR code and you'll have full access to the worksheets that we used. Um, so feel free to edit them or use them um, in your classes in any way you see fit. And we'd love to hear uh, how it goes. So if you would like to contact us, uh, you can do so here and we'll be happy to answer any questions or hear about how the scaffolded support sheets worked out in your classroom. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye bye.